So today I've got this microphone to repair. It's a bit, um, yeah, broken. <laughs> it's a Trucker Series TM2007WG. It's a power microphone, which is actually not too dissimilar in design to one that I used to really like having. The front was different, but the same sort of dial control on the top. It's, a, it's an OPEC. It was OPEC? Yeah, it's very similar. Anyway, really nice dial on the top. It's really nice. It sounded really nice. I don't know about this thing, I don't know if it sounds any good or not, I've got no idea. But, it's battery powered. Let's get this out. Takes a 9 volt battery. We'll pop that out. Don't need power in it while we're working on it. We'll take the thing apart and see what we can do about this mess. And the interesting thing is, it's got one of these RJ connectors on it. I don't like these things. They're not really meant for this, because they get pulled and tagged and stuff like that. And it just, they don't last. Not very good, I've had lots of problems with these sorts of things in the past. But that's what the radio's got. So the first thing I found is that there's already a screw missing from in there. So there's no screw in there. That screw is present. Okay. Right, let's figure out what we're gonna do with this thing. Obviously the cable here is completely gone. I was going to cut that right there. Of course it doesn't matter. I just need to cut it and get it off. It's got this thing here as a strain relief. I need to get that out. Don't like those sorts of things. They're sort of meant to go on one way. See what I mean? Sort of one way kind of connection. It gets pushed on and that's it. But if you spin them, you can usually work them off. If you're careful. If you don't slip. Like I just did. Sometimes you just spin them and they'll work their way off. There you go, see? That's a trick to get your nose off. Don't pull them, spin them. Alright, so that's that gland thing out the way. Also, you need to try and reuse this if we can, but it's also broken. That's broken there. So, at the very least, we need this piece if we can get that off to retain the gland. And then we've got the wiring up here, so I need to be careful about not losing what wiring goes to. So have a close look at this, in case something falls off in the meantime. So there's a switch over here, like that. So the blue wire, this side. So the blue wire must be received. We've got a black wire there in the middle. So that must be common. And we've got red over there, so that's transmit. Then we've got some more wires. We've got a white one there which is disappearing up there. So that's obviously the audio side of the switch. And then we've got the shield coming down as well, which is going to where? That's going to the other side of that switch point there. Is it? There you go, the shield's going down to that common, same as the battery common. So shield goes to battery common. Okay. So we've got the wiring figured out. Let's take this microphone out of the way. It's probably holding the ball in as well. Then we can see it a bit clearer. Let's have another look. Alright, so there you go. That'd be the audio wire there. So when you push the microphone in, it joins these two together. So the centre of that wiper, so the wiper of that trimmer there, that pot, comes down. You close the switch, it joins that to the audio wire here. So that's all straightforward. So white is audio, red is transmit, black is common, blue is receive, and shield goes to battery common. There you go. Easy. So what I tend to do is I actually just cut the wires off and just leave a little bit left over because I'm replacing this piece anyway, it doesn't matter about wasting any. But I cut the wires off, leave them left over so you can see the colours in case you forget. I don't think I will forget in this one. but uh, and Then we've got to get this wire off here. I'm not going to cut this one, I'm actually going to desolder this one. Yeah, made all the difference, see? Made it easy to get off. Right, now I need to get this cable here ready to go back on. So let's try and get this gland thing off here if we can. Hopefully I'm going to strip it off. Sometimes it's over moulded and you can't do that. Not very easily. I'm going to shove a screwdriver on the side or something. Let's get some. Let's just get some tweezers, we shove these down, see that'll do it. I'll come back once I get this off, you don't need to see me do that. But yeah, you get this gland off so you can reuse it. Obviously, this bit being broken off is a bit of a problem. Would have been nice to have that, but it's actually a bit stiff anyway. 
Once right, so I've got that off, now I'm going to try and put it onto this cable. Just slide down. I'll worry about gluing it later on. First thing is to get the thing on there. So when we do the wiring, we haven't forgotten it. <laughs> Done that before, and take it all apart again. So I need to make sure this is going to be long enough to get up to here, obviously. So I need to basically stretch this out a bit. Now what you get here is going to end up with this all coiling up and being a bit of a pain. What I do is I'll actually get my hot air station out and I'll stretch it a little bit like this and just put some heat on it and it will soften it up then you'll be able to hold it straight and it'll be a lot straighter. It may still cool a little bit but it's not going to be like this. It's a little trick which I found helps quite well. So you want that to stop coiling, you want to stretch that bit out and warm this bit up. Now, you've got to be careful not to overdo it. Or you could end up melting the insulation inside the wire and shorten the wiring out. Okay, so just got to do that a little bit. Give it time. Don't do it in one spot too long. Just give it a chance to stretch. Okay. And the heat's got to soak through. Actually, do you know what? This is failing. See this? That shouldn't have happened. It should have stretched nicely. It's all going brittle. Not liking that at all. Yeah. I don't trust this cable being particularly great. Not great quality. Anyway, we'll carry on. So that'll go there, this will run around, it'll get clamped down, we'll run these wires around to where they need to go. And obviously I'm going to shorten down a little bit. I always like to cut them back from where they broke originally anyway, because they could be fractured a bit further down from where they originally broke. So I like to cut them back slightly from that anyway. But uh, I can't test this microphone, apart from doing continuity testing, but that's about it. What I'll do, I think, is attach this, glue this together, fit that in mount this up and then run the wiring to length and, and attach them. So I've also got to do the shielding which is around the white wire. So what I do for that is instead of trying to strip it all off, what I do is I just pull the white wire from the base. So I pull the white wire backwards instead like this. So it's easier than untwisting it all. There's the white wire and there's the bit we want. Now we've got this twine, let's cut this off, don't need that. Be careful not to cut anything else. So the white wire can be shortened. Go down to say about there. I do like to leave a little bit of slack, but you don't want to leave too much, all right? Otherwise you'll get other problems. We also have a yellow wire which was not connected in the original cable. There's no yellow wire here. There's yellow wire here. Nothing at this end. There's a yellow wire used at this end. Not that I can see. Maybe it's a spare. <laughs> Again, we'll cut these down with a bit of spare length on them to allow for any errors trying to cut them back or strip them or something. You never quite know what's going to happen with these things. They could go horribly wrong. I'm going to do one at a time just to make sure that I'm not going too short with any of them. Of course, I could just chop them all together. Wouldn't matter, but um, I prefer not to do that. So let's give this a twist. This also needs to come down and go to there. So let's do that. Now the original one had some heat shrink on it. I need to put some heat shrink on this as well. But obviously because now it's a bit further back than it was originally. I need to put a longer piece on. That's not a big deal. And the yellow wire I'm just going to coil up inside because it's not doing anything. Some cables just have extra wires because that's what they got. So I'll just install the heat shrink on there. Now I'm going to Heat the wire up, turn it, which might heat, shrink the heat shrink at the same time. Right. I've got to strip back all these other wires. I just need to get my strippers. I'm going to strip these wires back. Just a tiny little bit off the end. And I'll solder them, then I'll re-trim them afterwards once the solder's been done, because it tends to make the insulation shrink back slightly.
If you don't appear white strippers like this, and you do lots of things like this, or anything which may require you to strip wires, get some. It makes it so much easier. <laughs> Trust me on this one. Trim the very end off because it's not going to be too long now. So that means you've got decent length of wire with solder on, which is all okay. That's right. I think that's all right. Yeah. Now we're going to attach all these onto the actual circuit board. I should do the shield first because it's got this slightly awkward situation going on here. Now there are actually holes in the circuit board there, but I'm going to basically trim this one back a bit more. Not too much there. This one could be a bit tricky to do. So it kind of, it's all just blobbed together in this one spot. So we get one on, like that. Get that big blob of solder off it. we go. Press that one on. That looks fine. Checking for any shorts. It's looking alright. So now I'm going to go through and put all these ones on. I'm going to start the white one. I'm going to start from the left and go to the right hand side. So, white one first. A bit of fresh solder. Not liking that, actually. A bit more fresh solder. Solder. And a black wire. Fresh solder. And blue wire. any issues with the magnifier. So I'm going to just tuck this yellow wire down out the way and we can put this microphone bracket back on again now. Oh, let's refit the microphone. Or the microphone element I should say. Now this LED obviously has fallen off this side, I don't know what I was actually holding in there, a bit of luck I think, so I need to glue that back in again. But before I do that, in case I need to work on it some more, I actually want to test continuity between these and these to make sure they seem to be okay, in case there's a broken wire still or something. 
So let's just stick the probe on one of the wires, or one of the terminals on here. Don't know which one it is. Okay, second from the end is audio. The very end one is RX. Okay, so is this one TX? No, no. Let's try this one. No, that's TX. Where's the shield? Good question. Alright, I'm going to have a really close look at this on the magnifier. The right one which I thought was the RX is actually the black wire. i am just see it through there. So that's actually black there. So that is the common, which is why I was getting a common on the RX there. The common is there, audio is there, the TX is there. That's it. There is no RX wire in this plug. It's been cut off. Have a really close look in there. There's only red, white, and black. So I can see. So I know it's got those connections at this end. This end doesn't appear to be using any of them. Yep, there's only three wires at this end of this plug. So you've got black there. I'll do it this way around so you can see it end on. Right, black, white, and red. So there's nothing else. Even though it's a six pin plug, it's only got three wires in it. So what I'm getting is fine. That's actually all good. No issues there. So I attached a bunch of wires I didn't actually need to use anyway. Do you know what I'll do actually is put a little bit cleaner inside the switch as well whilst I whilst I have it apart we'll do a bit of a clean bit of IPA chuck that in there give it a bit of a clean up then I'll put some switch cleaner in it like a lubricant just to make sure the switch is all good because they do get dirty so with my collection of screws here I've managed to find a couple which are similar enough so I'm going to replace that screw there the one remaining screw with a pair of Screws which actually match and fit. Here we go. Screw together properly now. Let's put the battery back in again. And uh, we can verify that it still actually functions. <laughs> Audio there, yep. Yeah. Here it comes on. Okay, that probably works. I've got no way of actually testing this. I don't have a test of this kind of plug, so I can't test it. At least not easily. It, I'm comfortable that it will work because all the connections worked. Continuity was there between all the connections, so it's probably on a go. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Other videos to watch, like CB repair stuff, in case you're interested in those, stand there. I expect you are if you're watching me fixing your mic. And a Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel. Catch you later.